Me fake, there's me tissue. I'll do. Have a brew. <laughs> that was a weird laugh. Are you not going to say anything like? I, I think I should have an introductory song now. I, I'm going to introduce introduce Holly. This is Holly, right? So, um, Holly's an ex-prison governor. Um, you just answer yes or no, so we're not here forever, and we can get on to the topical <laughs> subject. Uh I never worked, Holly, uh, I do know she is, as a governor, duty governor, used to come on healthcare when I worked on there, is that correct? Yes. Uh, Holly was diagnosed late in life, um, although she's not that old now, with uh, borderline personality disorder. Yes. I now believe that means that summit's, summit's a miss, whether I believe now, because they're changing everyone's diagnosis, aren't yes. they? Yes. However, what it means is, that you struggle to function or don't function like a normal person. Yes. Like me. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, classic trouble with relationships, things like that. If, if you were to read what they say about borderline personality disorder, that's you. Yes. Yeah? Exactly. However, yeah. for the vast majority of life, you functioned and you worked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's fair to say that quite often with people who struggle with something, a lot of people do function and keep going and you used to say uh, that the prison officer side the prison governor was not the real you away from that the real you the borderline personality was the real you yeah yeah me let me just cancel that me for me uh the real you was the governor the prison officer yeah and the other bits a bit of a sideline but you had a blip Sadly, it ended your career. Yep. And then you struggle, don't you? Yes. For some purpose. Yep, yep, yep. Is that a fair summing up? Because there's yep. a lot of new subscribers. A lot of people won't have met you. Uh, I will put a link in the description and the pinned comment to the interviews I've done with Holly before. We've discussed the prison career at length. We've discussed female prisons, which I enjoyed at length. Yep, yep. Because I knew nothing about that. And we dis discussed your... Is that yeah, it's working. <laughs> and we discuss your mental health as well. Yes. Um, so today, I've just read Holly. It's it's taken from the Inside Times, which is a paper for prisoners. You can actually subscribe and order it out of it to your home address now. Okay. Um, and it's about, it's not a prison officer's handbook as such. It's like a rule book, isn't it? Yeah, the the ex extracts that's in the Inside Times is from the the yeah from yeah, the staff and what the, you call the staff handbook. Staff handbook. So yeah. I read it to Holly. Uh, <clears throat> you know, she was like, "What? What the fuck?" So so basically, <laughs> what it says it is defining um, and talking about friendships with prisoners. Now, on training, uh, private and public sector, me people said. Friendly, not friends. I remember yes, that. Yep. That's one of the things they said. Yep. Um, this goes into detail. It goes into... And it's, it's been added by, as it were, the corruption, anti-corruption element of the prison service. And it's defining what is in an appropriate relationship. You know, if it's uh, anything to do with sexual element, anything to do... Basically, it discusses all the emotions involved and not to treat them like you would a family member a yeah, sibling yeah um yeah not to not to treat them favorably yeah um i mean anti-corruption covers this sort of basic sort of um sort of bribery blackmail aspect bringing stuff yeah. in etc etc no personal people, gain of any sort yeah. whether that be it actually says like emotional gain doesn't it you yeah. know yeah so basically implying that staff could possibly use prisoners to fulfill an, an emotional need in them. Yeah. But my reading and interpretation of it was that basically, <laughs> this, is, this is really basic, you have no emotional connection, Obviously, no physical connection. That's quite yep. obvious. But yep. you have no emotional connection and treat that person favourably due to that. So I'll give you an example. So if, for example, 
you had someone that was actively self-harming previously in the past what you or I would have done is maybe give that person a little cleaning job just to get them out of the cell, just so you can observe them, just to give them a bit of purpose. Yep. So basically what's that, what that is saying now is that that is, is classed as corruption because you're treating, you're one, drawing emotion into it because you are feeling an emotional connection, i.e. empathy with that individual. And therefore, because you are feeling that empathy, you, you have given them a job. But I think I'm just going to waffle on here now because, it, you know, it's really got me thinking. So if I relate it to myself, yep. I have sort of emotional deficits. So like really serious emotional deficits. Yep. So helping other people definitely, definitely fulfilled an emotional gap in me. It made me feel better about me, okay? I did it because I am generally, I would say, an em empathic person, but my whole career was centered around what can I do to make this person feel better? What can I do to take away the pain, whether that be staff or prisoners? Because I know how that pain feels. So under the new definition, under the new terms of anti-corruption, I'd be a corrupt member of staff. Well, you know, uh, on on similar lines, uh, I probably haven't got as many deficits. <laughs> however, however, in life, you know, on reflection, helping... Well, in fact, it's a fact. Helping people helps you. So now what I do, helping people helps me in the prison service. Yeah, no one's going to pat you on back. I didn't want pats on back. No. Neither did you. Oh, yeah. Or did you? But... Helping people was, you know, when I worked on healthcare, you know, some of the people, you know, there were some individuals who, you know, as well as being violent and disruptive and everything else, were not in the best place. Um, and was, how can you not feel sympathy for that person? Right, so some officers, right, were very cold in the job, weren't they? They just, you get job, you get people who didn't care. Yeah. You get people in the middle who did the best job they could, but perhaps... You know, didn't have the passion or the yeah, the drive and then you get people or, yeah. who, you know, took the took the weight of the world on their shoulders. Well, yeah, yeah. So the, for me, I'm just not gobsmacked because nothing surprised me now. Just why do people feel that they need to break it down to that? Is it so it's there in black and white, and then if they want to get rid of someone or sack someone or say. Well, you you know, I I've got a bit of a theory. So obviously, there's been mass recruitment. We've we've talked about this previously. I in... give the figures now. Go on. So, roundabout England and Wales, UK prison service working with lads or males, mm -hmm. yeah. The lasses or female staff is now running at about forty percent. People have predicted, probably not the prison service, because I don't think they really care, that, you know, maybe in the next two to three years or five years, it will be 50% female staff, male staff in a male prison. But not only that, take into account the age of the people that are being recruited as well. Yep. So we've had mass recruitment in terms of uh, when... They obviously they decimated the workforce during workforce modernisation, yep. and then uh, went oh fuck we, we've 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 made a mess of this. So re-injected a lot of investment um, through what they called the key worker um, and offender management model. Yep. Um, so basically um, attracted a, a significant new bunch of staff. I'm not saying I'm not saying um, they were all young. But yep. I would say the majority, I know 19-year-olds that were, were, you know, trained as prison right, officers. That's, that's uh, you know, 19, I, 20, I would say, olds. I would say, so, you know, the bulk of the staff that are recruited are between 19 and 30, potentially. Now, that may be wrong from statistics, but that's my personal experience. So you're talking someone potentially who has no life experience or very little life experience it Correct. is incredibly overwhelming to work in the prison service so I, my personal theory is that they are having to nail this down because 
people don't know how to function. On the one hand, you're being told you're a key worker, so you are everything to that person. Just you're a in, in very simple terms, because there'll be a lot of people who, who don't understand... Key worker. Yeah, explain what a key worker is briefly, because obviously I haven't got all day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know how much I talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a key worker is basically a prison officer who is assigned a, a, a core group of prisoners, maybe about six prisoners, and they are there with that prisoner throughout their journey in custody. So they will help them with elements of, so if they're doing like a short sentence their, their basic needs might be when they get out they need housing or they need to access some drug services or um the the prisoner might need them to liaise with mental health services so that key worker sort of does that sort of wrap around work with that prisoner is that a prison officer that's the prison officer so they are expecting these prison officers these key workers to meet with these prisoners on a regular basis i think it might be once every two weeks now have an in-depth conversation talk about where they're at talk about you know what their needs are how they can help them but on the other hand don't get emotionally involved don't cut all that emotion off. Don't see them as a sister or a brother or a friend or a son or a daughter or whatever. And just deal with it. Now, that is completely contrary to the other training we receive in terms of mental health and, you know, suicide prevention and uh, prevention of self-harm, where you are encouraged to... That is why... They try and have the same case manager on every review so that they can develop that consistent relationship where they are aware. Dynamic security staff, yeah. prison relationship. And I defy anyone, regardless of your age, regardless of your gender, not to be emotionally affected by some of the stories that you hear. Now, I'm not going to lie. I used to hear stories and I just want to put my arms and my humanity just wants to put my arms around that person and say, oh, I, I can't help you at the moment, but I want you to know that I care. But now they're saying, no, you can't do fuck all. So basically it's tying staff down so that I think that when they do act on the borderline or inappropriately, they've got the catch all there to say, you're gone. That's my personal opinion. See, the problem is now love corruption has gone through the roof. Um, I'm not surprised. Figures. F figures, government figures, union figures, etc. Um, might look favourably on the prison service in the last three years because we've been locked down. So um, there might not be as many assaults. Yeah. There might not be as much self -harm bullying. Self-harm or, yeah. Self-harm uh, or And I do believe that self-harm actually went down. I, I, well, you know, if you're locked behind a door um, and you're in debt or whatever, then and yeah, nobody yeah. can get, you yeah. know. So, th them figures for me are a bit misleading. However, corruption figures, I don't think they'll actually get broken down a lot, but they are. The, the corruption's gone through the roof. A lot of prisons, again, they won't tell you this, have enhanced gate security, whatever that means. Um, like I say, you've got a lot of young and experienced staff. Well, all staff are inexperienced because you've got inexperienced bandages now. Yeah. Very little experience yep. left on the landings. Yeah. Very little experienced staff at governor level. I've I've heard one or two people one or two people have messaged me. Do you know this person? Do you know this person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think mm. a knobhead or something. And then they say, Oh, the deputy governor at our place. <laughs> or the governor or the yeah, governor yeah, at our yeah, place. Yeah. yeah. And you think I trained with that fucking idiot and now they're earning like 60, 70 grand a year. Not but, that but it's, it's not, not that, that I'd but, want but that the, job. It's the but fact that, you know... Um, lunatics in charge of the asylum. lots of people are being walked to the gate, asked to leave. Yeah. Um, can I just add on top of that as you well? Can anything you I, want. Um, I think... Well, I know staff are being collared even before they get into the prison. So during training... So there's um there's been well just prior to towards the end of my time there was uh, you know several investigations about the propriety of staffing training 
Um, and I think that might have been the instigator for this because they had staff that were, and I saw them, videos of on WhatsApp that were being shown to WhatsApp groups, men dancing around with no clothes on. That's not the reason why I saw them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just to clear that up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, racist, abusive, um, you know, discriminatory sort of behaviour and actions that were being caught on WhatsApp, uh, people being made to feel really uncomfortable with this inappropriate behaviour. And it's only for the fact they got caught because of a whistleblower. Now, that behaviour could have quite easily translated into the prison service. And you're thinking, these are people. So they, we, we were encouraged or told that what we need to have is moral authority. That was the words, isn't it? Friendly but not friendly but not friends. Yeah. Moral authority. Yeah. So you're the one yeah. sort of taking taking the the sort of the the consistent moral attitude. Yeah. But we've got people that are in training that seem to have none of this sort of HMPPS consistent morals. So it goes right. So we'll we'll talk about the forty percent last. For me, you know, you you worked in uh, in female prisons didn't yeah. you and th there is a percentage in there I know there is I know style yeah, can advertise I... for female only staff can't yes they, they can yeah. so yeah. have you any idea what that is <sighs> we'll make one what? up for now do you think it might be 70% have got to be female or more I think they changed the so we've been through a period of recruitment, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. As the prison service, yeah. as the prison estate yeah. has expanded, so I think it ha used to have to be around sixty forty. So say you're in a mid, uh, 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 sorry, I think it used to be more. I think it used to be about seventy thirty. So seventy so, percent of lasses in the in lasses a, jail, thirty yeah, percent men. And having worked in there, would you agree that you needed more lasses, more female staff? Yeah, purely because of the circumstances in terms of searching and um, property. It, it was the basic prison functions, not in terms of the relationships. Yeah. Um, it was more to do the basic prison functions like searching and, and stuff like that. So would you not think that would apply to male jails as well? Yeah. Um... I think the, the problem is now, isn't yeah, it, I'm... that they're struggling to recruit... Mm. and it just seems to be attracting more lasses. I think what they need to do, I mean, I don't personally see anything wrong with a male prison advertising for male staff. Now, that might seem quite controversial. Not However, so my opinion as an ex-manager is that each prison is going to be unique in terms of um, their function, yep. and each prison is going to be unique in terms of their current staffing Yep. sort of um ratios yeah so for example you have a local prison like liverpool which has a high turnover of prisoners a very very busy reception yeah uh, lots of searching going on lots of security related you know activities yep. going on you could argue that you need a 70 30 male yep. female split in in liverpool yeah I, I, but I would you could argue go with that. at hindley which is a category c prison which is a little bit lower which doesn't have as busy a reception yep. um you might say oh you need a 60 40 split or you could get away with the 60 40 or you could get away with the 60 40 yep. however my opinion is it's down to doing what uh, probably you know a a i hate the word benchmarking and i don't use benchmarking in terms of previous use of the word benchmarking yeah. in the prison service i mean benchmarking is in what tasks do we do yeah. how many hours do we do those tasks so yeah. how many hours do we spend searching in reception how many hours do we spend uh, yeah. you know searching cells and having to full search prisoners and how many staff do we need to do that simple as that yeah and and we can't just say Oh, we need staff, staff on the landings, staff on the landings. And again, staff being either females or being males. Being female, you know, and without without being, so the, the feminists are probably going to shoot me down here, but it's reality. It is absolute, utter you reality. You need males in a male jail and you, you need, need females in a female jail you do. to carry out your functions, your basic stuff, and and, and, and that's facts, isn't but it? But also, I'm going to talk about the the pure physicality and the differences between men and women so i oh, there were times God. no i no no, no i'm I, with you i'm with you but I'm with okay you. so yeah. 
without and this isn't sexist this is fact if you are a male working on a jumpy wing where it's a little bit tasty a little bit of stuff going on yeah. say there's six of you working there's you and five others yeah okay do you want five other 21 year old women and i'm just generalizing here for Which all the, the feminists now. yeah or would you like maybe one or two women and the rest males that can maybe because the a balance a I, balance. I would like a balance um I let mean, me t somebody asked me a question the other day so they said uh you've been involved in a lot of incidents yeah is there any of them incidents where uh any any female officer you ever worked with you would want her involved I said no Mm. I says one, well, two reasons. One, I were brought up that to women respect don't, women, don't get, uh, Res respect yeah. women, look Protect after women. Them, yeah. you, you know, Miss Walters uh, used to, if I were opening a door and someone were kicking off, she, the number of times she kicked off, I'd move her out of the way. Mm. And she'd be like, ah, I'm having a pencil. I said, no, move. Mm. You know, if he's going to do something. I, so there's I, that. Another I, point yeah. is the physicality. If I was going in a cell, uh, on K Wing with some violent individual or whatever, these lads I won't want at the side of me. And also. Never mind. The, the, there's not any incident I've ever been in that I will want a lass at the side of me going in, kitted up to deal with someone violent. Not a chance. I agree with that. And like I said, that might be a really unpopular opinion, but it is the absolute matter of the fact when you are dealing with these prisoners that are either off their heads on drugs, so they've got like super strength, yeah. they've been in the gym. I'm not even kidding. Some of the female prisoners we used to send male staff into because they were so dangerous and they were so strong. I told you, I told you, Mick, because you you know I like to tell a story. You love a story. Mick, we won't mention his second name, he's a fantastic, used to be CNR instructor. Yeah, yeah. Who left. Yeah, yeah. I know him. He told me, I, I think it was at, at your nick, style prison, uh, eight months pregnant, last, yeah, yeah. on drugs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Horrendous. Three teams, they got three teams kitted up, or two teams kitted up, lads. Yeah. They've gone in to deal with, she's wiped one team out, like chucked them all off, yeah. battered them, yeah. smashed them. This is a. <clears throat> A very petite, eight months pregnant lass. The second team's gone in, she's wiped them out, and they've ended up having to put a third team together. Half an hour, battered 12 officers, this lass. You know, so... Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I have been involved in hundreds of CNR incidents. I've been involved with uh, females and males. Um, I've been involved in sponsor... and But I will say... The incidents with the males, every single one of them has been a spontaneous incident, i.e. when it's happened there, you've had to respond. Yeah. So, you know, a fight or something. I've been involved in uh, CNR incidents where there's been me and two other women and we've managed to control it. Control and restraint for people yeah. who are new to the channel, right? As a prison officer, you talk to work in a free officer team to restrain people, basically. Most people... It works well, doesn't it? Yes. You know, there is a percentage on drugs, super strong strength, physicality. Yeah. It doesn't. So when we're talking about CNR, control and restraint, that's using... Legitimate uh, force. Little bits from martial yeah. arts, locks, wrist locks, arm locks, and that sort of thing. Yeah, and, and the aim... M in my opinion, is to get that person in cuffs as quickly as possible so that they're subdued and they, they can't... Minimum you know, use of back. force, minimum. minimum risk to them, yeah. minimum risk to staff. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, so we, 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 we're taught and we are trained that you work as a three officer team. Um, but yeah, so we've completely strayed off the topic of corruption, it, haven't we? But it's, yeah, but, but it's all right because what we're talking about is lads and lasses and having a balance and a yeah, ratio, which is yeah. what it's about for me. A lot to do, again, it might sound controversial, of the corruption going up is because it is attracting more younger vulnerable people. Staff. Vulnerable people. And I wouldn't say these are horrible people. No, I, wouldn't. I wouldn't say they are people that go into the prison service with the intention of behaving in that way. Not at all. Let's remember people that, and I'm not generalising because I know there's going to be ex-offenders watching this um, and, you know, I don't want to cause offence to them. Um, but there are people 
in prison that spend their life, spend their whole time watching staff. Watching staff, watching how they interact, of they will. looking for their weaknesses, looking for their sort of you know the behavioral quirks and things like that, and they will spot a scared rabbit a mile off. Very good friend, yeah. A very good friend's son started in the prison service young. He spoke to me, I don't want him to do it. I spoke to his son, yeah, not in a bad way, mm. just you know what to expect. I went back to my mate, he said, put him off. He says, no, I haven't put him off. I've answered his questions. Well, I'm not happy about it. I says, end of day, you know. So let me tell you what happened because it didn't end well. And that, well, he was getting bullied. So when, when he got his first placement, he's getting bullied. By so, staff? No, by uh, a prisoner. So okay. he is an OSG, he's not a prison officer. Yeah. He decided to go in as an OSG officer, operational support group, and work yeah. alongside prison officers, but not so much prisoner Prison, contact. Yeah, yeah. So this guy uh, took offence. He's in his face constantly, threatening him, and the like made life uncomfortable. I know this because this is what his son said. This other guy then pulled this guy and said, "You know, give the lad a break." Uh, it come to blows. The lad who said give him a break ended up filling in the lad who were bullying him, and. Cut long story short, of a 12 month period, he ended up where he started taking him things in. Because he felt grateful yeah, that he'd he did. say, yeah, that he'd he's, saved he's left the job now. Yeah. Uh, he just escaped prison. He's not a bad lad. Uh, he's got to send another job now. Um, it is a difficult gig. You and I know when we were at Strange Ways, um, a couple of lasses, one more mature and one young, both ended up getting sacked for inappropriate relationships. Yeah, it, it was, we went through a spate at Liverpool prison where it was quite common. Um, and I don't know whether these people, there, there were some that I definitely know had the sort of criminal intention, had criminal links outside of the jail. Yeah. Um, but there were some that, and I use inverted commas, no, fe it. fell in love. Right, right listen, <laughs> I, I, I do say this, um, my first job, I worked in a kitchen knife manufacturer, big, big factory, yeah. There must have been 250 lasses from young to old. Mm. There was about 30 lads. You got sexually harassed. You got passed around at Christmas. Uh, lots not, of attention. Yeah, no, no, lots yeah. of attention. Uh, you know, it, it was a bit scary as a young, but also it is quite flattering. Mm. And, you know, you, you, girlfriends or whatever, where you put lads... Old time con, jewel thief. We were talking as, on a similar lines about this and he said, right, uh, I've done a lot of jail. Uh, I remember when lasses came into the prison service, Miss Samworth, and he said the discipline went. Oh, can you hear my tummy? Yeah, you're hungry. No, it's energy. <laughs> as He's, long as it's not wind. No, it's not. Um, behave. <laughs> he, he said the discipline went he said because you put lads and lasses together they take the eye off the ball romance relationships oh it's right um, I mean... and ev everybody knows that in prison prisoners you shouldn't be having relationships but it's gonna happen but not only that, i mean it's relationships between staff i mean how many affairs that do we know that broken happen? marriages yeah and and you are right when you work really closely with someone in an emotional environment yep. these things are going to happen i mean I would, and like I say, I'm not saying it's because, uh, you know, as the most attractive, as a female, you get attention in a male prison. Of course well. Sometimes that attention is quite intimidating uh, and quite, you know... Um, some of it there, will be unwanted. And, and completely unwanted. But there are some then people that will say, and, and it's, when you can read people, it's not coming from a, a horrible sexual, I'm going to, you know, no. assault you place. Yeah. It's like, oh, you look really nice today, miss. It's how you respond There's to that. There's some charmers. Yeah. I got on with a lot of lads. There were some charming lads. There were some nice lads, very polite. Yeah. I got on with them. You have a laugh with them. And it's how you, because what you don't want to do is 
belittle that person and make them feel so i would i would you know downplay it for example i might sort of the you know, thing be is self... that some of them don't mean any harm by exactly. it either That's they're what genuinely I mean. being polite they might like you as a governor you help people you get a reputation for helping people or whatever you know people are respectful of decent staff who help people yeah you know and they might interact with them differently to you know They'll yeah, interact with yeah. someone who's perhaps not a good officer or not a nice officer. I would say you got more inappropriate behaviour from staff than you did from prisoners, without a shadow of a doubt, in in my experience, in my sort of career. Australian governor. I'd, l I'd love to find out who this is. I got told by one, one of my Australian subscribers, famously said, a lot of my uh, prison officers would make very ordinary prisoners. A lot of my <laughs> prisoners would make fantastic prison officers. It's interesting, isn't it? There was it? a lot of inappropriate behaviour. Um, you know, that macho bullshit bollocks. Uh, quite de And that, and I don't mean that aimed at, at just lads, at lads as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. belittling people, putting people down or whatever. It's a tough gig. So, um, we're into this subject now. How do they deal with it? Because putting something in a staff handbook might make it easier to get rid of people. You know, but it, how do you support yeah, people how, when they are? And the other thing yeah. I I haven't mentioned to you is uh, the figures for recruitment and retention now. You know, the people that are signing up and the people that are handing the notice in is coming very close. It's it's almost a uh, balance. So now. they're completely so one in one out. Complete one in one yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Pretty much yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, obviously, you know they're just doing whatever they can. They well, trying to make the, it more the attractive. The terms and conditions changed when I first joined. It was an attractive wage. You got a really good um, uh, annual leave allowance, and you got really good sick benefits. They changed all of the sort of, so, you know, it's a lot easier to get rid of people when they're in probation now. They get less leave. The pay is not as good. You have to work overtime to sort of increase your basic wage. Um, the career sort of prospects. So when I jumped from officer to senior officer, it was a significant pay increase. But therefore, the assessment was more stringent. You were, you know... So yeah, so so there's a there's a lot of things that have changed. Um, How do you address it, or can't they? I I, I honestly, with the, such a high turnover of staff, it's like prisoners. If you're doing a short sentence, what quality work can you do with that person? Okay. Nothing. Nothing. So in terms of molding staff and. So we have less staff retaining them, so, retaining staff. So they become experienced. So we have less experienced staff that are there to sort of mentor them and bring them on. So an experienced member of staff now is classed as someone who's got two years in. Yep. Uh, and they're already potentially. I, I, I think somebody told me in their prison now it's one of the London jails. Um, the classing experiences over a year, and the amount of people. It's 50% 50, 50 with more than a year in. Yeah. 50% with yeah. less than a year in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you say, how do you address it? So you've got very clear guidelines now, yeah. basically, that you're an emotional robot and you're not to engage in any emotionless. sort of... Emotionless. Emotionless robot, yeah. Yeah. And not to engage in any sort of um, familial... I think those are the exact terms, familial relationship, yeah. um, which I don't know how you can function in. Um so what do you do that's the big question so how do you i know sort of when i don't know if your training was the same when i did training we did lots of role playing lots and lots and lots of role playing but does that f well no, in my it opinion just, it does not fully it's not real prepare because you if someone's there threatening you in a role play <laughs> you know damn well they're not gonna yeah, hit you yeah, or yeah. do anything are they it's so, not real the training is not real training is poor well, that's why they started. They started doing more on the job training, didn't they? So you were you were actually in a prison more, going yeah. round in twos and threes, and sticking out like a sore thumb, and yeah. everyone knowing that they were the, the junior screws. So that was quite awkward. Uh, but I genuinely do not know 
what people can do to address that because a lot of it comes with age and experience a lot of it comes from advice informal advice guidance mentorship from prisoners uh, sorry from staff I, i'll give you i remember i went to um i got really terrified once it was working when i was working on the wing at style and it was coming up to new year's eve and it was it was year 2000 and it was coming up to the new year's eve as we were moving into year 2000 and this woman offered me four thousand pounds to bring in a bottle of vodka i think she was desperate i think she was asking everyone it's not because she uh, have the money as well i don't know but obviously i was fucking terrified i was like oh my god have i come across as someone that is you know prone to this i think everyone in their career has probably been asked for something at some point and i went straight to my senior officer and i was like i need to speak to you really anxious and um he sat me down he went what is it and i said i've been asked to bring in a bottle of vodka for four thousand pounds and he went ask her how many bottles she wants and it just kind of broke the yeah. you know that kind of yeah. right it was like don't worry about it you've not done anything wrong turn it on its head have a bit of a laugh about it and that was the sort of dampened it dampened the stress down for me actually security manager at forest bank that's private prison i worked in yeah phone him up can he come down to uh to the wing come down to the wing what's up what's that three grand where have you got that found it in the cell what you phoned me for <laughs> Do you realise how much work you've caused me? Yeah. You know, basically. Um, because there are a lot of people that would keep that. Of course there is. It's uh, just just briefly, and then we'll end this. So they've now got Parva prison officers. Yes. Uh, they're on about introducing stab vests. We've got body-worn cameras. Is, is for you. Yeah, but the, the, the body-worn cameras, the second hand, not everyone's got one. <laughs> Uh, people are going in cells and not using them. Mm. For me now, if you if you look at the prison system, take all the officers out. What they're doing is putting systems in place like new education, in cell phones, tablets, all this, mm. and the staff are secondary. Mm. So them systems are going to be there whether you've got inexperienced staff or whatever. And for me, uh, I don't know. If someone told me I had to wear a stab vest for work, I'd be terrified. And, and also, what kind of message does that give out? So I liken the... I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm quite an advocate of in-cell in telephones and things like that. No, and, I, I am. You know, I... If you can afford to use them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Um, but there is an element of... it. It's like with your kids when you want to shut them up, you give them an iPad and, you know, that yeah. kind of keep them occupied. And I'm not negating the... Um, the threat to staff in some circumstances but it just seems very very interesting that the thought of stab vests that replaces the need for dynamic security relationships staff relationship, relationship building which makes it safe. well it, it, to me it's none. a physical barrier yeah, of course it is it's a physical course it is we, what you're doing is you know we're, we're going to keep people banged up they're going to have the ipads they're going to have the phones they're going to have everything else we'll let them out for shower no mass association they're talking about association now mass association you know like a mass shooting no need for it now it's not purposeful <laughs> it's not purposeful yeah, getting yeah, people yeah. out of cell to talk to other people yeah, yeah, and yeah. interact when actually you sh yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so the dynamic security side of it's going you know um but if they consider the risk so great to staff that they require a stab vest and parva, then surely they should be getting paid more money. And therefore, if you're getting paid more money, I don't know, the, the assessment should be more rigorous and you should hopefully attract well, you, a better you, quality you've, you've staff. You just touched on something, right? The money for someone at 19 is a lot of money. Yeah. It is a lot of money. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, so maybe that is attractive or whatever. However, I think we're gonna leave that there. Um, for yeah. me, it is about dynamic security. The easiest part of the job is having people out, talking to people, interacting, see what's going on, see who might be getting bullied. Who's talking who's up to, to who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you learn stuff, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, of course You know, taking that away, I'll tell you something else that is, is quite disturbing. Um, people send me pictures of things that's going on in their establishments. 
all, when I said pictures, they're not taking pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bad assaults, you know, because obviously if there's a bad assault, they're taking mm. pictures for police cramp. Mm -hmm. There is some horrendous assaults mm. going on now. It's, you know, way worse than anything I've ever seen. Mm. Um, so, yeah, the figures might say it's working, keeping people locked up. I think the actual reality... I mean, a lot, so just going off topic a little bit, a lot of the injuries I've seen against staff, um, apart from sort of fighting injuries, punches, kicks, etc., are slashes and a stab vest. And the slashes are face, neck, arms. Um, a stab vest isn't, I mean, it'll protect your vital organs and ultimately yeah. potentially protect, yeah. you know, protect your life. Yeah. But there's a lot of other assaults that are going on that you can't, you can't go around in full body armour, can you? The best protection is interpersonal skills. Yeah, I, and having I think relationships so. I with think people. So. Shall we leave that one there? Yeah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Them or us, me. Whatever. <laughs> I'll see <see> there. <laughs> Holly. <laughs>